When I teach a class on wealth, one of the first things I tell my students is that their success rests on how well they understand how the universal law works. Money Wisdom gives clear, useful tips to help people manage their money well, whether they are just starting out on the path to financial freedom or need to brush up on what they already know. If you want to take charge of your financial future, you need to read this book. I can only show you how to apply the universal law to your life. You can use this strong force for good, but you need to know how to approach it and how to use it. The truth is that the level of wealth you can achieve is limitless. Are you ready to do the mental work that needs to be done? Of course, being prosperous also means having good health, a home, friends and peace of mind. But most of us already have some or all of those things, so let's talk about money first. You must have a firm grasp of the universal law of money in order to attract the money you require. Lesson 1. How to make, grow and handle money without being heard. Most of the time, becoming financially independent doesn't happen by accident. You have to plan how to handle, grow and keep an eye on your money. But a lot of people choose to keep these things to themselves instead of telling everyone. Why is that? Because handling money means making choices that are unique to each person. To make money, save money and spend, it's important to pick cars that fit your risk level and way of life. What works well for one person might not be right for someone else. When you talk about money in public, people like friends, family and co-workers may give you advice, judge you or put pressure on you. People can attack advice on how to spend, give or trade your hard-earned money without being asked because it might not fit with their ideas of how successful you should be financially. Protecting your chosen funds from loan pressure can make you feel unsafe, even though it can help you get rich. Not only can people with a lot of money have problems with others, but they can also be targets of lawsuits, scams and trickery, both online and off. Keeping some financial information secret can help keep you from being taken advantage of. That's why the wealthiest people learn how to handle their money in a sneaky way. They build up their wealth in a humble way and give freely without trying to impress. While they are happy to give general advice that has worked for them, they don't go into specifics. When it comes to money, only trusted partners and moral advisors should be involved. This simple moral approach to money can be used by anyone. Be careful to save and spend your money, but don't be cocky. Please say no to please to fund other people's projects or have in-depth conversations. Find teachers you can trust who can give you advice in private. Make smart choices about your money without letting other people affect them. Protect your financial well-being by sticking to your personal ideals and enjoying peace and privacy. Lesson 2. Don't listen to the broker's money advice. A lot of people look for help with their money when they are lost or having a hard time. But it's important to be careful when getting financial help from people who have had results you don't want for yourself. Why bother with methods that are used by people who are always having money problems, are in debt, or are stuck in jobs they hate just to make ends meet? Their fruits show clear rules to stay away from instead of actions to copy. Without a doubt, there are some cases. Even the best money planners have bad days from time to time. Anyone can have money problems for a while because of a health emergency or a problem in their business. And of course advice from older people who have been through a lot is highly valued. But generally, it's not worth your time or could be damaging to get financial help from people who always have money problems, make excuses or see themselves as victims. Because of how they think, what they value and the choices they make, they are always in a state of shortage, which is not exactly something to copy. It's best to seek help from experienced teachers who have intentionally achieved amazing results and lives over many years. People who are good at managing their own money, like family members, co-workers 
and experts who show careful and smart money management. Through real-life cases, they give clear advice on things like buying a home, making a budget, saving and handling money. Mentors teach habits and information that popular leaders don't get because they care more about looking good than being financially stable. It may be tempting to live a fancy life, but when it comes to money, it's important to focus on the basics. Be careful when choosing teachers. Avoid getting financial advice from people who are having financial problems. Focus on proven principles shown by great wealth builders. Over time, your own successes will also motivate other people to do well. Lesson 3. Get money before you spend it. Patience is very important when it comes to money and investment, especially in a culture that values quick wins and easy ways to get rich. But if you want to be wealthy and free in the long run, you need to be careful and disciplined with your money. Earn before you spend and investigate before you invest are still good advice for people who are good with money because of this. It can be easy to get what you want right now if you use a credit card or get a loan. As a result, giving in to that urge too often can leave you with heavy debt payments that keep taking money out of your pocket every month. This is how spending money without thinking can lead to money problems in the future. It's smarter to stick to your budget, save money, and only buy things you can really afford. Patience and sticking with something will pay off in the long run. You can avoid debt and slowly build up your saves and investments if you know how to handle your money well. It's important to take a moment to think about a business chance that seems important and likely to pay off. If the chance can't stand up to some unbiased study, it's best to stay away from it altogether. Before deciding where to spend their money, smart investors carefully look at a company's financial records to get a clear picture of its strengths and flaws. They also think about the possible returns and risks and look at all of their choices. If you spend without giving it a lot of thought first, you might fall for scams or get bad results. A careful study, on the other hand, can help you choose options that could make you a lot of money in the long run. When it comes to your money, being patient will pay off big, whether you're new to investing or have done it before. You can become financially free and have more investment options if you put making money ahead of spending it. If you do a lot of study before investing, you can make sure that your money goes to chances that are likely to pay off in the long run. Having a calm attitude is very important for long-term financial security. When you want to get rich and be financially stable, you need to be patient. Money is a way to get things, not an end in itself. A lot of people see it as a sign of success or the final goal. But money shouldn't be the only thing that matters. It should be used as a tool to get what you want. It doesn't matter how much money you get. You have full power over your money. Some people say money is a tool. You can go anywhere with it but you'll still be in control. This saying really gets across the idea. Knowing how important money is can help you reach your goals and decide what's most important to you. Money enables you to travel, follow your interests, and have a good influence on the things that are important to you. But your money problems don't control the road you take or the result you get. You are able to do it, and money will follow your lead. There are two guys with the same amount of money. People can put their money into fancy homes, cars, and fun things to do. You could choose to live a simple life and give most of your money to good causes, like medical studies or grants. Both people have the means to travel, but the places they choose to go show how different their goals are. Think about two people who want to retire early. By diligently saving and investing, they built up enough money to be able to retire at 40 years old. One person decides to travel with very few things, and the other starts a long-awaited business project. It's important to remember this again. Money gives us options, but how we use it depends on our own values and goals. 
The real value of money is not in the money itself, but in the chances it opens up for you. Keep your hands on the driving wheel at all times. You have the power to decide what your wealth is for and how important it is to you, no matter how much money you have. Money moves you forward, but you still have power over your direction. Money can affect things in both good and bad ways. When money is treated properly, it can be a useful tool that provides safety and chances. But if you don't watch out for it, money can quickly become a controlling force that can cause bad things like loss, stress and anger. Understanding the idea of money hangs on, understanding that it is neither inherently good nor bad. How you see it and how you deal with it determines its value. When you put making money ahead of everything else and let it take over your life, it gets power and control that it doesn't deserve. In your quest for money, you ignore your relationships, health and beliefs. Putting aside the reasons you want money in the first place, it can be a very demanding master. Once you really understand money though, you can use its power in a way that fits with your values. Instead of letting it control you, you can use its skills to help you reach your life's goals. If you have a healthy view of life and a good understanding of yourself, money can be a useful tool that gives you chances and options to reach your goals. If you don't know how to handle your money well, it can be both a strong tool and a harmful force. To get through tough financial times and reach financial safety and success, it's important to understand the risks and benefits of money. To stay in charge of your money, you need to understand how it works. You should be in charge of your money and spend it wisely on things that are important to you. Be smart about how you use its power to help the most important events and results happen. When looked at this way, money stops being able to trick you and starts to seem much more important than it really is. Instead, it plays an important part in backing your morals and good goals. Lesson 5. When you use money wisely, it works for you and grows for generations. It can be tempting to only care about making money and using it for short-term pleasures and social markers. True financial knowledge, on the other hand, means building up your assets and getting the most out of your money, both for your own benefit and to leave a long memory for future generations. In fact, your financial success isn't just based on how much money you make. What matters is how much you can keep, which depends on how well you can avoid spending money you don't need to and pay as little tax as possible. The smart person who builds wheel thinks about every dollar they earn and looks for ways to make it grow faster and give them big returns in the long run. You think about how to save, trade, and manage your money in a way that will benefit future generations. This gives you the power to make choices about your money that most people wouldn't. Knowing the value of your money isn't just about getting something right away. It's also about building security and chance, which will help your future and the future financial freedom of your children and grandchildren. This old-fashioned way of thinking affects everything from how you spend your money to when you buy and how you divide up your assets. If you make building wealth that lasts for generations your top priority, you can use long-lasting money strategies like smart savings, investments and portfolios that are designed to achieve consistent long-term growth while putting sustainability ahead of short-term gains. You can also easily pass on your money and knowledge to your heirs through inheritance planning. The goal is to consistently work to improve your finances and handle them well, then pass on the results and lessons you've learned to future generations. That's when you understand that building wealth has affected more than just you and will last a long time. It's nice to know that your money will keep working hard even after you're gone thanks to the financial legacy you left behind. Lots of people want to get very rich and buy lots of nice things, like expensive cars, big houses, nice clothes, and other things that are seen as signs of success. But different knowledge systems from different times 
and places support, a different point of view. They warn that wealth is temporary and stress, that real happiness comes from using and enjoying things instead of having them. It says it all, his wealth is enjoyed, not owned. Being around beautiful things gives people pleasure, meaning and happiness. The focus is on the experience itself, not on getting or having something. Imagine how wonderful it would be to enjoy a delightful mix of feelings while taking in stunning views from a mountain lodge. On a deeper level though, even the nicest things don't really belong to anyone. The atoms and forces of things are always cycling and outliving their masters. We are only here to help for a short time. Because of this, the lesson stresses that real wealth comes from enjoying the wonders of the world without being attached to them. It's a very rare chance. The idea of change and the beauty of impermanence are central to many spiritual practices. Expressing thanks to Mother Earth for all the gifts she gives all of her children is very important in indigenous cultures. Buddhism and other Eastern religions stress how important it is to let go and know that nothing lasts forever. Wisdom traditions often tell people to be generous because sharing material wealth can help other people. When you finally get something you've been working hard for, try to see it as a chance to have some short-term fun. Now, use it to its fullest, share it with others, and let it serve as a lesson that real wealth is found in times and experiences, not in holding on to things forever. We are all tied together by an old rule that says we have to give up everything at some point. The best protection is not having to worry about money. Making a lot of money gives people the basic freedom and comfort they need. People who are financially free can take full control of their lives, follow their interests, and take care of themselves and their families. Being financially free is the best way to feel safe. To be financially free, you need to have enough assets and idle income to cover your costs of life without having to work. Getting rid of the stress of a job you might not enjoy just to make ends meet frees you. You can instead use your time and money to find useful work, increase your knowledge, build relationships, visit new places, and enjoy relaxation activities. Being able to make your own money can give you a sense of security and make you less stressed and anxious about your income. People who depend on their jobs often have to deal with the unpredictability of being laid off or the economy going down. The financially free makes steady cash flow from streams and assets. This gives people the confidence to face obstacles, follow their interests, and handle unexpected disasters without losing their balance. Real wealth doesn't mean having more money than you need to feel safe and happy. Epicurus said that some people are never happy, no matter how much they have. Instead of always trying to get more people, the goal is to give everyone enough freedom and safety to thrive. Once you've taken care of your money issues, you can focus on the things that really mean to you, like your family, your faith, your talent, or anything else that makes you happy and complete. Money is not your God. Learn Lesson 7. The thought of getting rich appeals to a lot of people. People in our society often look up to billionaires and see money as the answer to everything. But this way of thinking comes with big risks. When someone really thinks that money has all the power, they have to give up something. Ethics, relationships, and health are quickly pushed to the background as money takes over. Its role as a tool to reach bigger goals gets lost in the mix. Remember that having money doesn't mean you'll be successful or happy. If you fully believe that, you will find that money becomes the most important thing in your life. Seeking profit can lead to bad decisions, like taking advantage of people and your surroundings to get resources. The only thing that determines the value of money is how much it can buy. It has no other meaning. Balanced thought, on the other hand, knows that money is important, but only as one part of value. In fact, money does give us comforts and chances, as well as rewards and effects. There are, however, many things in life that are more important than money. 
These include love, knowledge, character, service, and spiritual link. Being aware that money is not a godlike force helps you keep a fair view of it. You can do the right thing to make money, spend it carefully, and share it with others. You gain control over your money instead of letting it control you when you understand how money can help you live the life you want without letting it decide what your life's purpose is. Money shouldn't be your only goal in life. You should know what it can and can't do. It is possible to use the power of money successfully while still staying moral. This way, you can get its benefits without giving up your values. It's important to keep money in check and not let it take over your life. So many people think that work and money go hand in hand. The more you work, the more money you make. There is, however, one thing that people who know about money know. Once you save and spend money, it can start making you money. As time goes on, your investments will begin to bring in a good amount of inactive income. This will allow you to cut down on your work while still making more money. This thought can be summed up in a simple but important sentence. When money works for you, you can work less. It's important to know that you don't have to rely on jobs or time charges to make money. It is possible to make your money work for you by investing it in things like stocks, bonds, real estate, or businesses. They get money from a lot of different places, like stock gains, bonuses, rental income, profit sharing, and more. At first, passive income will only add to the money you make from your job. But if you save and spend your money regularly over time, it can start to make you more money than your normal job. You become financially independent when your investments regularly give you the money you need to pay your bills. What this does is greatly increase the amount of time you have open. It's not that you need a regular job. You work because you love what you do, not because you have to. You can also take long breaks from work, which will give you time to work on other important things. No matter what method you take, you should be able to spend your time however you want, as long as you can afford it. How can one get to this state of happiness? Stick to a simple plan. Spend less than you earn, save regularly, and invest wisely with the long term in mind. Then, sit back and watch the magic of compound growth happen. It's important to be patient and follow through, but over time, your money will do most of the work while you take it easy and do less. Eighth lesson. Money shows how much worth you make. What is money and how does it make the world go around? Money is more than just bills and coins. It's a way for people to exchange value with each other. It shows the value that people add to society and trade with each other. People agree that money works because it's seen as a sign of value, which makes it easier for business and people to work together. Money reflects how much society views the efforts you make with your skills, ideas, goods or services. Like any other tool, how money is used rests on how smart and careful the person is who is using it. Do something that will help you. Ninth lesson. Be positive and prepare for the worst. When it comes to getting rich, there will always be ups and downs. As time goes on, the stock market goes up and down. As some options fade away, new ones appear. Being flexible is important for coming up with good ideas. Because money is uncertain, it's better to be adaptable and flexible, like a supple tree, than stiff and hard, like an oak tree that breaks easily. How can we use this information to help us make a business choice? When it comes to finances and business projects, keep a happy attitude and a positive mindset. Adopt a positive attitude by focusing on what's possible instead of what's not. But it's important to keep things in perspective and not get caught up in dreams and hopes that are too high. But it's also smart to be ready for the worst by being careful with your money, saving for emergencies and sharing out your assets. Do not take on too much debt. Developing the strength to handle economic downturns can be done by making living within your means 
a priority in your daily life. Take advantage of any chances that come up, even if the market changes, the way you think about things changes, or there is a world health crisis. Things are still going their own way in reality. To get good at a skill, you need to be able to change your mind quickly and easily. Is the pandemic having a big effect on your business? Change your attention to a field that is growing quickly. Stocks are going down because the sector is having problems. Use tax loss harvesting while moving money to investments that will earn you more. Are rates of interest going up? Get rid of some of your debt and buy bonds with good returns. The winds that blow on money are always changing. Sometimes they are gentle and other times they can be chaotic. Don't fight change, instead, be flexible. Every time you move, you can find new chances. Even if you are hopeful, you shouldn't ignore chances. Being optimistic makes a lot of things possible. It's often smart to find a middle ground. They easily get around the currents and winds that are always changing, enjoying the flow of their trip. Here is a guide to help you handle your money well no matter what. 10. Figuring out how much you're worth. We often don't realize how much we're worth and work hard, which means we miss out on chances to get paid fairly. A lot of kind people give their time to help others by answering questions or offering their professional services. People do this out of kindness and a real desire to help. Being kind doesn't mean you should forget how valuable you are though. People often say that if you don't value your time, no one else will either. And mismatch happens when kindness is taken advantage of. People are always asking for your time, but not giving you anything in return for your skills and information. You're basically telling other people that they can take advantage of your kindness. They don't have to pay you for your time and skills. To find balance, you need to recognize the value of what you bring to the table. Think about the valuable skills you've gained through different channels, like schooling, practice, and training. Next, come up with a fair way to share them. Do you give your friends free legal help in a relaxed setting? An artist who isn't getting paid for the drawings they've been asked to do? Are there any coders who would be ready to help build a big website for free? Is having a cook plan your meals for free? If you want to move forward, it's important to be clear and direct about how valuable your time and knowledge are. For instance, I'm willing to help with reading simple contracts for close friends, but for a more detailed legal review, the cost will be $150 per hour. Or, I'm open to working on website development if we can agree on a rate of $65 per hour or sign a project contract. Know how valuable you are by knowing how valuable your time is. Don't give away too many free services. Learn how to set fair prices that are based on your skills and the amount of work that needs to be done. You'll have a steady income and feel good about your own worth. This will also help weed out people who are just trying to take advantage of the situation. Know how valuable you are and push others to do the same by doing business in a fair way. Building up a lot of money takes time and work. To build business companies, get rich on the stock market, and increase your real estate holdings, you need to be persistent and determined. They get bigger slowly over time, which can take years or even decades. People often say that patience is key to making money because it means staying determined and working hard over and over again. When you look more closely at the lives of great business owners or investors, you'll find stories of problems and problems they had to deal with, chances that didn't go as planned, and projects that didn't get people interested right away. Through a process of learning, changing and persisting, they kept going even though things were hard. In the end, the hard work paid off with a steady income. It's just as important if you want to handle your personal earnings, become financially free, get rich, and hit a net worth of seven figures. All of them require making clear plans and sticking to them, setting up a safety net for unplanned costs, investing money regularly, spreading out your assets, and looking for ways to lower your tax bill. 
interest and rewards that grow over time can only work if you give them time. If you become famous quickly with a hot stock pick or a business that goes popular, you should feel lucky and have a party. It's important to keep in mind, though, that sudden windfalls are not the norm. Getting rich in a way that lasts takes constant work and patience over a long time. Being able to see small steps forward turn into big successes through hard work is very rewarding. Lesson 11. The weight of debt. Credit cards, school loans, personal loans, mortgages and other financial responsibilities put a lot of stress on families these days and debt can build up very quickly. But a lot of people don't fully understand the dangerous long-term effects of debt until it's too late. Someone once said, it's easy to get into debt, but it can be hard to get out of it. When interest payments start, your budget is less open because you have to make payments every month. In the meantime, demand keeps building up. Your debt keeps growing even as you make payments. This math can be used for both big college payments and big credit card debt. Debt can make things hard because it limits your options and needs your full attention all the time. What's the answer? Cut down on your debt as much as possible and do everything you can to pay off any loans you have. Instead of buying things right away, start saving money before you buy them. Simplify and make things easier. Be patient and keep your freedom at the same time. If you spend less than you earn, you won't have to worry about making interest payments forever. At first, it might be hard to stay away from mortgages and moderate student loans, but it's important to remember that debt can make it hard to get money for other things. You are not saving money when you pay off your bills. The money you spend goes to making other people rich. Getting rid of your bills can have a big effect on your general finances. Money is set aside for business ventures, personal projects, retirement plans, and investments. As bills go down, net worth goes up at the same time. Paying off all of your bills is the first step to getting rich. By putting in the work and saving regularly, you can get rid of your financial problems for good. What makes it unique and how does it change lives? Enjoy the chance to get richer and the peace of mind that comes with being in charge of your financial future instead of being stressed out by debt. The draw is too strong to resist. The promise of making a lot of money in a simple and quick way. Get rich quick plans often catch the attention of a lot of people from all walks of life. These methods for getting rich quickly on the other hand usually don't work. What's even scarier is that they often leave their following broke. Many scams try to get people to join by promising them quick money. Investments in cryptocurrency or stocks that are expected to grow a lot in a short amount of time are often based on business chances that are overstated and make ridiculous claims of high returns with little work. There are a lot of scams out there that promise you can get rich by recruiting others into their business or win at gambling. The siren song of these schemes usually involves a great secret, the promise of endless wealth or the easy way to start making money right away with no risk. It looks like a great deal, right? But things rarely go as planned because building long-term wealth is usually more difficult in real life. Giving real value to people or markets is a slow but necessary part of getting rich. To be financially successful, you need to constantly use business basics, make investments based on real economics, do real work, and wait for growth to compound over time. On the other hand, plans that claim quick money usually use flashy tricks that don't work. When it comes to basic math and systems, their amazing secrets don't always lead to long-lasting answers. In the end, reality sets in when buyer demand drops, legal action is taken, or spread models that depend on getting new people to join run out of steam. No matter how appealing they may seem, stay away from plans that promise quick money. You can make steady success by sticking to good business and investment ideas and focusing on providing real value. 
In spite of the fact that it might not look showy, the results often show exciting and long-lasting effects after 10 years. 12. Putting money into yourself is the best thing you can do. You can put your money to work in a number of ways, including stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, and cash. Different experts have different ideas about which choice will give you the best returns. But what is the one trade that everyone says is the safest? Putting money into your own growth and building up your skills. For what reason is it best to bet on yourself? When used on purpose, the human spirit has a huge amount of promise for growth. By putting time and money into developing a clear vision for your life purpose, job skills, artistic gifts, health and relationships, you can have a lot of happiness, satisfaction and money for a long time. To start investing in yourself, you need to be honest about your skills, flaws and areas where you can improve. To improve your skills, efficiency and impact, make clear goals. Adopt a growth attitude over time, which means you see your skills as malleable and able to grow with hard work and smart use. In real life, this means giving yourself the tools you need to improve your skills and abilities, which you can then use to be more creative, productive and good with customers. Spend money on classes that will help you get a better job. You can make extra money from your hobbies by paying for trips, classes or gear. You can afford a teacher who can help you make big, long-lasting changes to your life if you make changes in other parts of your life. Putting money into yourself can pay off every day through better performance, which is a great way to grow. By making the workplace better, learning soft skills in a workshop can help you make more money. Knowing how to use marketing strategies can help you make more sales. Learning an exercise practice makes your mind clearer, which helps you solve problems better. Your most valuable tool is still your human potential. Ultimately, investing time and effort into learning even a small part of it can lead to big financial gains. Right from the start, make sure you bet on yourself and keep doing that often. Giving up the traditional idea of trading time for money is a big part of learning how to make a lot of money these days. Knowing what it means to punch the hourly clock can help you deal with limited income. To truly become wealthy, you need to use your unique skills to make big gains. To make stacked income, you need to make money that doesn't depend on how much time you put in. Over the course of several years, writers make income from their books instead of getting paid all at once. Selling product rights is how software writers make money. It's a prize for the work they've already done. People who make movies on YouTube can make money from videos that get a lot of views. Investors get money from things that do their own work. The key is to learn high-paying skills that are both specialized and scalable. It can be very helpful to be an expert in certain areas such as technology, innovation, science or business especially if that knowledge can be used on a large scale or by managing resources well. To give you an example, a good trial lawyer can make a good living, but it takes a lot of time and work. A very skilled surgeon with their own special methods, tools and techniques can make extra money by training other doctors, selling new ideas and getting patients from all over the world. Both show a high level of skill but one makes it clear that it can bring in more money and provide long-term earning potential. At the moment, only a small number of skills can benefit from being amplified significantly. In what ways does it get hard? Getting a deep understanding that goes beyond what a beginner knows and then coming up with new ways to sell those skills to make passive or scalable income. This challenges our dependence on ease of use and quick satisfaction. The perks, on the other hand, make the difficult learning process worth it. Find the skills you're naturally good at, make them easier to levels that aren't usually seen, and turn them into self-sufficient things that make money for you without you having to do anything. The original work 
is definitely worth it when you think about the extra money and freedom that come with it. Lesson 13. Learn how to handle your money better. Stress about money is one of the most common things that can happen in life. A lot of people are constantly worried that they don't make enough money, that they can't make ends meet with each paycheck, and that they are too stressed out by their mounting bills to deal with them. These kinds of money problems can make people feel stressed, angry, and like they don't have many options. But things don't have to stay this way. For long-lasting effects, not being able to handle your money well is important. It is very important to understand your personal funds, even if things are going badly and aren't entirely your fault. For starters, find out how much money you have. Look closely at your income, your costs, and any spending that you don't need to be doing. This could be making your money problems worse. It is important to keep track of all of your spending, no matter how small, so you can see where your money is going. Find ways to save money by identifying costs that aren't necessary, like buying things on the spur of the moment, paying for services that you no longer need, or membership fees for things you haven't used. First, make a budget that fits your actual pay to your actual costs. Lower your costs by cutting back on housing, transportation, fun and other areas as needed to make sure they are doable. Focus on schooling, look for other ways to make money and actively seek better job opportunities to maximize your earnings. You can also get better at managing your money by learning how to use banking tools, make smart investments, do your taxes and save money in smart ways. Learning to read and write helps you handle your money better instead of hurting you. You can get through the process if you are determined, brave, and don't feel bad about making mistakes with your money in the past. But freedom is just around the corner. You can take charge of your financial life once you learn how to track your income and spending. Do not let money rule your worries and decisions. Instead, you have the power to control its effects. This power gives you peace of mind so you can meet different needs achieve your goals and deal with problems that come up out of the blue. Take charge of your money before it takes over your life. Lesson 14. Make your own rules for living. How do you measure wealth? People often judge it by its physical goods, like money, stocks and real estate. But real wealth is more than just having a lot of money in the bank. Having the freedom and money to fully enjoy life's events is what real wealth is all about. Once our basic needs are met, like food, housing and safety, getting more money doesn't have much of an effect on our pleasure. Getting deeply important experiences and achieving your goals through the smart use of resources is what really matters. Let's look at an example of a rich person who runs businesses and invests their money. Interestingly, they might not be as happy with their daily lives as a trip writer who constantly immerses themselves in new cultures and makes a humble living. The first person is rich in money and the second person is rich in important events. From this new point of view, wealth means having the freedom to fully enjoy things like relationships, creation, work, travel and more without having to worry about money. It stresses how important it is to live with purpose and make sure that our time and money are spent in ways that are in line with our ideals, rather than chasing status symbols to feel fulfilled. Philosopher Henry David Thoreau said that the real test of wealth is how well a person can let go of things they don't need. Instead of chasing financial goals that look like success, you can find true wealth by putting your energy into your hobbies that are in line with your purpose. Are you fed up with being stuck in a job that just pays the bills and doesn't give you the freedom to live the life you want? To move forward, it's not enough to just raise salaries. The money needs to be reorganized so that it really does add to happiness. Set up ways for investments, passive income streams, and things that go up in value to bring in money. You can now live life to the best because you have the freedom and money to do so. Instead of focusing only on money, 
Think about how well you can match with your soul's purpose when you think about what wealth means to you. Living your life the way you want it to be gives you the freedom to break free from what other people may expect of you. You don't agree with the way society defines success in terms of material things and status symbols like big paychecks, fancy cars, high status jobs, and crossing things off a list. Instead, you use your real self to figure out what's important. You might want to think about the values, hobbies, relationships, and activities that make you happy and fulfilled. Instead of chasing empty status symbols, spend your time, money, and work on things that really make you happy. Being honest is important here. People you talk to at work, with family, or with a partner, can make it hard to set limits and build trust so you can stay true to yourself. Showing that you want to live on purpose instead of letting random events carry you around idly. It also means making adjustments and taking risks. Leaving the usual routes for your job can be scary. The process of trading your money for happiness is easy to understand. When judging these kinds of decisions, one must not take into account what most people think but living a life that is in line with your values gives you unshakable drive, strength, and a deep sense of purpose. It's no longer just a way to make money to work. It starts to make sense. Being busy isn't as important as spending time with people you care about and working on your own growth. Instead of just ease, decisions are based on health as a whole, which includes the mind, body, and spirit. Every day, there are times when you have to make a decision. Could you explain the way of life, or would you rather have someone else do it? Choose to live your life the way you want to, no matter what other people think. Money management is the last lesson. Make money, grow it, and handle it without being seen. As our journey comes to a close, we've looked at some important money sense rules that can help you get rich and keep it that way. These lessons are based on what I've learned about money over the years, so I really hope you found them useful. Remember that real knowledge is what separates good people who make money from great ones, especially when you think about long-term success. Taking care of money can be hard, but making sure that future generations will be wealthy for a long time takes special skills. Learn the basics, save money, invest wisely, and stick to your budget. Allow the magic of compound interest to work for you by being patient and persistent. It's important to be humble as your wealth grows. Having a lot of money can make people cocky, so it's important to stay away from that. It is important to handle wealth wisely because it can disappear just as quickly as it was gained. You should know how to deal with risks and spread out your capital. Before brazenly showing off your money, Think about the possible security risks and legal problems that could come up. Lastly, don't pay attention to comparisons, talk, or social pressure when it comes to money. Look for advice from people who have been through more and learned more from it. Mentors who live by the same money rules that you do and whose goals are similar to yours. A lot of different roads can lead to wealth. It is important to pick the ones that fit with your personality, beliefs, and idea of success. Wishing you to get rich in a good way, keep it up by working hard, and handle it wisely and properly over time. Now, do something that will motivate you. I would also like to add that creating money is a spiritual science that anyone can understand and use. It is just as possible for spiritual laws to work as the laws of physics, math, and other sciences. These laws can help you bring money or anything else you want into your life. Like a lot of people, I learned about wealth when I was having trouble with money. In order to get money, I committed to prosperity thinking, and over time, I learned how to make it work for me. I finally won $50,000 in my state's lottery. I then started my own successful business with almost no money, and now I have plenty of money to travel and do the things that make me happy. Besides the lottery win, I've also won more money, theater tickets, trips, and a lot of other things. 
It wasn't long before I was writing magazine pieces about wealth and teaching people like you how to attract money. There are a lot of strong ideas in this audio program that were learned over many years of research. Some of them are the law of attraction, mantras, the practice of getting, and more. You should listen to this show over and over and pay close attention to the mind ideas each time. It's said that repeating is the key to learning, and I really don't think anyone can take in all of this information in one sitting. As you listen to my show, don't forget to take notes for later use and keep this show close at all times for review. A component of everything in the world, the universal law, is a life force. Some people call this power God, while others call it the infinite. Don't forget that this amazing creative force works through our awareness and lets us attract what we unconsciously believe in. To put it another way, you attract into your life exactly what you put out there in your ideas, feelings and hopes. It's possible that you want to know how the universal law lets us attract whatever we believe in. The answer is that the very nature of the universal law is to reflect or copy our deepest thoughts. Also, keep this idea in mind. Take note of what I'm about to say. This awesome power doesn't know how to turn you down. There is no way that the universal law can say no. To say it again, the universal law doesn't know how to fail you or say no. Some people are very shocked by this because we are so used to hearing stories about how God hurt people or how God burned down a town. That's not all the truth, though. The facts show that some people in history had bad luck when they didn't have faith or when their faith wavered. The same is true for the universal law. It will meet your needs and wants. You have to believe in the artistic process, though, and knowing how faith works is the best way to grow it. It's really that easy. Think of the universal law as a waiter. What if you go in and order steak and eggs? The waitress won't say, no, you're going to have fried fish instead. It's his job to bring you the steak and eggs or whatever you asked for, no matter what. The waiter in the diner and the universal law both don't have an opinion on what you should do or how much money you should make. So this choice gives you the freedom to live the life you want with as much money as you want. Either you're rich or you live from dollar to dollar, you always have a choice. Now you might ask, wait a minute, Eddie. If everyone can be wealthy, then why are so many people poor or barely getting by? The answer lies in their belief system. People have taught us that to get what we want, we have to work hard and fight. We have to work hard to get a raise at work. Some of us have even been told that the only way to get rich is to work hard and sweat. But the truth is that if your faith is strong enough and your commitment is complete, you could have been well off all along. Then, at just the right time, everything you require will find its way to you and become a part of your life. There will be enough money for you to pay your bills, eat out, explore, and do anything else you need to do. You see, listener, the quality of our ideas and subconscious beliefs determines how our life plays out each day. Suppose you keep attracting bad money situations into your life. Guess what? This is because deep down you believe in struggle and lack. But if you think good thoughts and really believe that someone is always taking care of you, you will always have money and good things will happen in your life. You will attract wealth to yourself. What do you unconsciously believe in, is the question. It matters what you think about money, because your thoughts, beliefs, and most importantly, your hopes, are the things that hold you back from being wealthy. What kind of money do you expect? Do you know what your goals are? If you want something badly enough, you have to be determined to see it through until the end. If you aren't clear or aren't fully committed, the universal law will have to react in the same way. This is because it will be reflecting your weak wishes. So get a 3x5 card and write down your money goals. Would $10,000 or $100,000 work for you? Don't make having a million dollars in the bank your goal if you can't picture yourself having it. 
In the event that $50,000 is more appealing, you should write it down and trust that it or something even better will be sent to you. After writing down your goal, look at it every so often to remind yourself of how rich you are. People are getting richer all the time and every day there are new millionaires. Some of these millionaires work hard to get their money, while others win the lottery, a contest, or a big jackpot in Las Vegas. Keep in mind that if someone else has a million dollars, you can too. Going to a Rolls-Royce store is one of my favorite ways to improve my luck. I can really picture how nice it would be to own a Rolls-Royce when I look at all those other beautiful cars. In my mind, I see myself driving down the coast in my Cornish Roadster, and then I see myself driving it home. Luxury cars and homes around me tell me that I can be rich too, because other people are rich. That is, if you want to become aware of wealth, go to places where wealth is found. In downtown, you will never feel or experience wealth in a public park or train stop. Plan a trip to the most expensive place you can think of to feel what it's like to have money. It could be a wealthy area, a fancy hotel, a pricey restaurant, or a nice shopping store. If you pick the pricey place, for example, you should go there. Forget about being able to buy more than coffee and sweetbread. Just being there will let you experience the wealth so that you can make these rich feelings a part of your own. That's what this game is all about. Take note of the soft furniture and the fancy feel of the place while you're there. Don't forget about the customers as they pull up in their fancy cars. Once you know what it's like to be wealthy, you can use these strong memories to help you picture yourself being wealthy. Beverly Hills was the first time I stayed at a fancy hotel. As I walked up to my room, I took note of how fancy and grand the lobby was. It was about two inches thick. There were beautiful paintings on the walls, and the hall had a big grand piano. The rooms cost between $300 and $2,000 a night, and it was clear that only wealthy people stayed there. I lingered in the hallway on my way back down that afternoon, taking in the atmosphere of the place. This kind of exercise can help you become more aware of your wealth. Getting away from places where people talk about lack and limits all the time will help you attract more of what you want. Negative energy can find you and try to get into your thinking. If it's strong enough, you can feel it pressing up against you. Without spiritual strength, things can get in the way of your growth and sway you in the wrong direction. If your friends talk about not having enough or being able to do something, then change the topic or go somewhere else. You should work on wealth thought, but don't tell them that. It's fine to share this kind of thinking with people who understand it, of course. However, the fact that you are keeping it a secret makes it easier for you to attract wealth. For instance, talking to someone when you're scared of them usually helps because you let go of energy when you talked about what was going on. Your feelings would get the best of you if you didn't tell anyone about your fears. Because you don't have to deal with bad outside distractions while working on a prosperity awareness, the fact that you keep it a secret makes your power stronger. Do you believe it or not, listener? One silly talk or fight about your commitment to wealth can ruin weeks of spiritual work so don't open your mouth. The word secret comes from the same root as the word sacred, so keep your work on wealth holy by not telling anyone about it. Things will change in your life as your inner spirit grows. Instead of just going through life and dealing with whatever comes your way, you will start to realize that your life has a deep meaning and is developing according to the beliefs you hold in your subconscious. People will pay you back what they owe you, your money will last longer, and you will attract better money-making opportunities. You may even feel spiritually lighter and more sure that your goals are coming true. You will get the money you want faster if you can raise your awareness faster. How creative do you think? Your mind can still be filled with lots of wealth, even if you live in an apartment complex for low-income people, this will activate the universal law. A friend of mine lives in an old apartment building on the bad side of town. 
She consistently reminded herself of her wealth, and she kept thinking about having a lot of money every day and every month. This woman worked hard. To attract material prosperity, she did everything she could on a spiritual level. She dreamed about having a big house in a fancy part of town every night before she went to sleep. She thought about getting a new Volvo and taking trips all over the world in her mind. She ultimately met a wonderful man who sold real estate because she stayed true to her inner vision and this action plan. Another year went by and she married this man. On their wedding day, he gave her a new house and a new Volvo. The next thing I'm going to teach you is very important, so please write it down. Because this part is so important, you should take extra time to really understand it all before going on. Well, you need to be very clear about how much money you want right now. Know that you are working with a spiritual force that can send you money or anything else you need through a variety of ways. You could win the money, find it, or get it given to you. You could even start a company that makes a lot of money right away. You can't tell the universal law to give you $50,000 by 5 p.m. on Thursday and plan to get it. That's not how the law of universality works. It's not a power that can be played with or pushed. When you try to force or control something, you actually stop the process of creation. This is because these actions show that you don't believe in the universal law's creative process. So, if you want $50,000, you should look inside yourself and follow my examples to become aware of your wealth. In order for the universal law to start delivering, you must first make sure that you are ready to receive the money or whatever you need from any source. People, you are co-creating the universal law by making sure your ideas and deeds are in line with it. When you start requesting and informing the universal law that your money must come from a certain route, you are breaking the law. Being anxious and jealous is another thing that can stop you from getting rich. It takes a lot of energy to be impatient, which is a strong sign that you don't trust the universal law to deliver. Besides that, jealousy is a bad energy that can stop your wealth from coming true. Your constant feelings of jealousy block your good from coming to you because they are strong reminders that someone else has what you want. You should emotionally bless someone, like a friend or co-worker, when they get rich or have a lot of money. You should also accept their good luck. Then you should think about yourself and know that the same thing, or even better, can happen to you. Use of mantras correctly is the next thing I want to teach you. What we say is very creative, and it has the power to shape and change the way we live. In order to attract the money we require, we can use the powerful force of our words. By saying certain things over and over, we give our subconscious mind a strong belief in wealth. This makes us attract more money. Spiritual law says that you will attract into your life what you strongly believe in. I am a rich and prosperous child of the universe. I am financially prosperous in all that I do. Money comes to me easily and effortlessly, and I give thanks for my good. When you use mantras, it's important to keep them short and upbeat. This makes it easy for them to take root in your subconscious mind. Some people say their mantras in the afternoon or evening, but the best time is first thing in the morning when you're still awake. Your mind is going through about 12 waves every second. This is the best time to make a mark on your subconscious mind because it is open to new ideas like dirt that is ready to grow crops. So, first thing in the morning, you should put good thoughts in your mind. The first words you hear in the morning can affect the rest of your day, so think and say good things to yourself in the morning. When you woke up that morning, do you remember that the radio alarm clock played that song that you had been thinking about all morning? You could not take that song out of your mind. The reason for this is that you heard that song when you woke up, in the early morning, when your mind was open to new things. That song was stored in your mind, which is why you heard it over and over again all morning. That's why you should never hear the news first thing in the morning. Some news stories are bad, and you don't need to start your day that way. 
So, say your mantras out loud for a few minutes every morning before you get out of bed. There are times when you can't say your mantras out loud, but you can still think about them for a few minutes. Maybe you should plan to sit down and write your mantras on a piece of paper in a few minutes. It's important to be aware of the words you use throughout the day to talk about your life. When you talk about yourself, do you use creative, lively words, or do you say bad things? Because the subconscious mind can't tell the difference between a joke and a serious statement, you should never make fun of money. I know a woman who is always sick and always saying, I am so broke, I am so poor. Because of this, bad things never happen to her. Sadly, her bad thoughts and words keep her from having enough money. Now I'm going to say something else important, so make notes. What you think, say, believe, and do are all constant statements of the universal law of who you are. Yes, it's true that a deed is a statement. A lot of people have never heard this thought before, and if we want the universal law to react to our thoughts of plenty, we have to feel good about everything in our lives. As soon as a negative thought comes up, switch it out for a positive statement or a happy memory of a time when you made enough money to meet your wants. When I say, watch what you do, I mean this. Where do you buy your clothes? Do you spend time in thrift stores when you can just grab what you need at a major store? You have $1,000 saved, but you still buy the cheapest jacket you can find, right? It's fine to buy a cheaper jacket if you don't have the money for a higher quality one. If you have the money to buy a good jacket though, do it. That will remind you that you always have the best. People who spend money are more likely to always have money on hand, since having money is an indication of wealth. When you have money in the bank, you should always be smart, but don't save it up when you need to pay for something important. Along with affirmations, the use of visualizations is another exercise you can do to attract wealth. The goal of this practice is to create a clear mental image of what you want in your mind. This is important because you need a mental image of what you want in order to obtain it. Also, when you think about what you want, feelings about it may come up. You can use these feelings to change your goals if you need to. For instance, if you set the goal to attract $100,000 but find it hard to believe it can happen, or if you feel like you should aim a little lower, you should change your goal to $50,000 or something that feels much better to you. Listen, pay attention to how you feel. That's your gut talking to you. When I had credit card bills to pay off, I would close my eyes for 10 minutes every day and picture my pocket full of cash. Then I would picture my credit card bills showing that I had no debt. This was a nice and uplifting image for me, and I liked doing this. The important thing is to make a good picture of yourself that you can accept. It's been a long time since I did this exercise, but I remember having trouble with some images. Like when I was working out, I would try to picture my bank account showing a sum of $1 million, but I could never see it. In my mind, all I saw were a lot of zeros. As my understanding of myself grew, I changed my goals based on what my thoughts and subconscious mind told me. I began to picture a $50,000 check written in my name. For some reason, that picture worked better for me, and the number felt better to me. That's exactly what the universal law gave me, $50,000 as I continued to picture and confirm my wealth. If you have trouble seeing certain images clearly in your mind, that means your subconscious mind is telling you to change your goals a bit. I want you to know that the power you have inside you is alive and smart, and it is always looking out for your best. So, pay attention to how you feel, because that's how your subconscious mind talks to you. Now I'll talk about a part of my training that I really enjoy. It's one of the most interesting parts of this philosophy, and it's also one of the best ways to get the money you want. In fact, this exercise is so strong that it can make the process of creation go much faster. It's interesting that up to 99% of goods on the market that claim to bring wealth 
never even talk about this subject, which is called the practice of receiving. Receiving is so important that you will only be able to receive from the universal law 50% of the time if you can't learn it well and practice it. A man on the street will tell you that it's better to give than to receive if you bring up getting. If you want the universal law to respond to your thoughts of plenty, you must learn to accept gifts from other people. This is especially true when you are thinking about being wealthy. The truth is that a lot of people in our society have a tough time accepting. They understand how to give, but not how to receive. They get very scared about it. Many times, when someone offers to give them something, I have seen them get tense, drop their keys, or get sweaty hands. Does this sound like something you know? Yes, of course it does. It's something we all do. I've been there and dealt with the nerves that come up when someone gives me something or offers to give me something. But the important thing is to keep going and practice taking, even if it scares you at first. We have trouble being good listeners when we don't trust ourselves or are afraid of the unknown. But one of the main reasons we can't receive is that society tells us that having more things is a sign of greed. People have even told us that money is the cause of all bad things. It's not money that makes things bad. It's the love of money that often gets in the way. You can use money to pay your rent, buy a holiday, or get a new car. It's not good or bad at all, but greed comes into play when you want more than your fair share and also want your neighbor's share. That's what greed looks like. Because of the universal law, there is no such thing as lack. There is enough money for everyone. Yes, you should always say yes when someone offers you money, a chance or anything else, even if it's just paying the lunch truck bill. This way of thinking is only useful for people who are good at receiving it. Today, you should look for times to practice receiving during the course of your day. You don't have to use everything that other people give you. Give some of it to other people. Being open to what people have to offer, on the other hand, keeps your spiritual balance and is in line with your statement that you are a wealthy person. Listener, your statements and your commitment up to this point have all been to attract more money. And if you turn down anything that comes your way, even a free lunch, you're blocking the flow of good things into your life. So, if you tell yourself that you are wealthy, the world will always take care of you. But if you get upset because a friend wants to pay for lunch, you create a spiritual block and cancel your support of wealth. In short, your mind is out of rhythm. The universal law is perfectly balanced, so it can't bring about what you want because your energy isn't in sync with it when you say one thing and do another. If someone offers to pay for your lunch at the next lunch with a co-worker or friend, please accept it with thanks. Say thank you and accept it. Don't think about what you can do to return your friend. The universal law will take care of the details if your friend is meant to get something back. You should reflect on the day's events and be grateful that the universal law provided you with a free meal as you make your way home from the restaurant. You can expect this power to show up in your life more often. Keep in mind that you are working with energy and since it is energy, it has to react to you in some way. Why did I say earlier that the universal law can never say no to you? Because it is intelligent energy, it has to always answer you in some way. Think about it this way. The universal law will answer you in two different ways. When your energy is high enough and you are ready to accept what you have set your heart on, it will answer you by saying yes. As Dr. Emmett Fox said, this is when you have set up a virtual version. Being patient is the second thing that the universal law will do to help you. This means you need to keep working on yourself. The signs of your wealth are still coming together, but it will take a little longer because you are still determined. On the other hand, you can be sure that the universal law will give you what you want if you keep trying and are really dedicated. One day at work, a woman friend of mine gave me some shoes that her husband had never worn. 
This is one of my favorite examples of how I kept trying to receive things. For that reason, I never turned down anything that was offered to me, even if it was just a few cookies or a can of soda. Anyway, this woman friend of mine told me the shoes were brand new and would fit me perfectly. There was a pair of two-tone leather shoes inside the box that looked like they were out of style 25 years ago. I was shocked when she gave them to me. There was mink fur where the laces were tied at the top of the shoes and the shoes were sticky. When my friend offered to give me the shoes, I almost laughed out loud, but I worked hard to hold back my laughter. I could have fallen to the floor laughing at that point, or I could have done what I said I would do and been a good player in that situation. I took those shoes to the first goodwill shop I could find on my way home that afternoon. In spite of the tacky dance shoes, I later thought about how I was able to receive. And that's how you should be, reader. You should get so good at this exercise that you never turn down something that comes your way. This will help you believe that you are a good listener and, most importantly, it will balance your energy so that your thoughts, words, feelings and actions are all in sync. The universal law of attraction will work for you and the money will come to you. You also can't turn down money you find on the ground. That's like how the universal law doesn't care about the difference between a penny and a million dollars. That's why you should always pick up coins that are lying around. Then you should think about how balanced you are getting and how much you are in sync with universal law. I keep all the coins I find on the street in a certain room in my house. In every moment that I see those coins, I thank the universal law for giving them to me because I know that they are energy coming to me from the universal law. As you become more aware of the little things in your life that are actually energy moving toward you from the universal law, your personal power will grow. Eventually, you'll find that your energy is strong enough to bring that goal into your life, no matter what it is. You might think it's silly to pick up pennies and get cheap dance shoes or other things from people who want to give them to you. But this practice isn't about collecting pennies. It's about your commitment to wealth, being a good receiver, and letting the flow of endless possibility into your life. You should focus on accepting everything that is given to you, even if it's just a cup of coffee or a small gift. When you do receive, make a mental note of your capacity to receive. Be grateful that the universal law is responding to you and then rest on the thought that the money you want is just around the corner. We've talked about the universal law, making goals, affirmations, visualizations, and the practice of getting. Now you can use what you've learned in real life. I have given you the most powerful method for wealth that you may ever find. I've already said that I used this same program to win $50,000 in my state's lottery and to make a business that makes me a lot of money. The power of the universal law can help you if you use it. The most important thing is that you follow the rules I've given you every day. That's what's called a wealth action plan. A $50,000 lottery win took eight months to come true. During that time, I consistently supported my wealth, practiced my visualizations, and stayed focused on my goal. The most important thing for me was to make sure that everything I did matched what I was confirming. I never said anything bad about myself or the people I knew out of my words. I knew I had to accept everything that came my way because I was supporting wealth and success. I also knew that my words and actions had to be in line with the order I set with the universal law. I would immediately switch out ideas of wealth for any negative ones that entered my mind. It was the same with what I said and did, which I carefully watched. The universal law can only give you what you think it can give you. As you can see, listener, your wealth has to come through your awareness in order to appear. Because of what you believe and what you expect, it has to come from you. Nothing can run through you if your mind is full of bad thoughts and hopes. My mind was full of bad things about money, and it took me eight months to get rid of them all. If I could get rid of all the bad stuff in one month, then my wealth would have shown up in that same month. 
Some people who listen to this show will be able to make their dreams come true in a matter of months, but for others, it may take a little longer. How much mental clutter and bad thoughts are present in your mind will determine what action you take. Reader, follow the plan and make every day a holy day when you can learn from the universal law all around you. There is a universal law that says you have all the power and will reach your goal if you stay true to your vision and act in line with it.